a story that I have been covering all summer long. You know, we've talked about it, the scandals at Texas megachurches, right? God's exposing the judgment that the Bible says starts in the house of the Lord. Well, there are still pieces being moved. God is not done, okay? And, you know, I've talked about Cross Timbers Church, how this whole deal with their former senior pastor, Josiah Anthony, happened, the lack of transparency, you know, talked about executive pastor Byron Copeland coming in as the new interim pastor, then that changed because of another scandal involving him and Gateway Church. I mean, there's just so much. And now, news has come out that more pastors are resigning from Cross Timbers. I mean, it's just, honestly, this is just happening every day. It's hard to keep up with it all. But yeah, founding pastors at Cross Timbers now, they are apparently gone as well. What is the story? What did, you know, the elders have to say about this? We're going to dive in and we're going to get into all of it here in just a second. But before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, those interested, you want to know my story of how I went blind and how I operate and do everything that I do without being able to see, I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And also, as you guys know, I have been sharing with you and keeping you updated on my wife's health. Of course, she suffered a stroke a couple of weeks ago that I've been telling you about. She's still currently in the hospital right now. Of course, you know, as I said, we were in the hospital for a week, only home for three days, and then she had an allergic reaction to her antibiotics, and now she's back in the hospital again. I do have an update on her health, but before I get to that, I want to Again, remind all of you, if God puts it on your heart to do so, we can really use your help uh, with generous donations at this time for our medical bills that are continuing to pile up. Uh, my wife is going to be out of work for, originally it was six weeks, it may be longer now because things got delayed after the allergic reaction that she had to her medication. She's not getting any short-term disability, nothing like, no paychecks are coming in from her, it's solely on me right now, uh, but also with you guys uh, helping to support us, to keep us propped up during this time um, as we continue to, you know, get her health taken care of. You can donate multiple ways now. And as I, I said the other day in my video, we now have a GoFundMe that has been set up to help us with our expenses. If you are interested in helping us through donations to our GoFundMe. I have the link to that in the description of this video. It will be in the description section of all videos going forward as well. Uh, if you missed the video that I did the other day, the link is in there as well. But again, you can go to our GoFundMe where you can make a donation there. Also, you can continue to hit the super thanks button on the YT video, or you can become monthly contributors by joining the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash not by Sight News. That link is in the description. And I got to say a big thank you to all of you who have contributed. I mean, we saw the numbers of their GoFundMe continue to go up after I put the link out. You guys are great. Uh, we can't thank you enough for your generous donations, just your nice words, your comments. You know, my wife and I usually read them together in the hospital at night when I go back to see her and I, I stay the night there. As I tell people, you know, I, I'm there pretty much all the time except for a few hours in the afternoon where I come home. I try to do one video for you guys a day if everything is good. Take a nap, a shower, and then I'm, I'm right back to the hospital. So until I can get my wife back home again, uh, this is probably going to be uh, the way that it is for a little bit until we can get back home. So thank you all again. Let me give you guys a quick update on my wife's condition, everything going on, then we're going to get to the cross timber stuff. So uh, last I updated you, you missed the last update, I, I talked about the horrible allergic reaction that she had to her antibiotics, uh, and then, you know, how we've had to, you know, pull their antibiotics off because we have to monitor her to make sure she doesn't have any more reactions, all of that. I called her last night after I was, after I took a nap. I uh, wish I could have slept longer. <laughs> I'm very sleep deprived. I haven't slept much in the last two weeks, and I continue to drop weight like, you know, crazy. 
because I'm not eating a whole lot either. I'm eating enough to sustain me and keep me going, but nowhere near what I would be doing regularly. So she had a good day uh, yesterday. You know, still had some swelling, but but finally things were starting to go in the right direction. And then late in the afternoon, I wasn't there. She told me this when I called her. She started getting a little bit of a breakout again, like just redness, like on her chest and on her on her arms. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? You know, the antibiotics had been out of her system since Tuesday at this point. So they upped her dose of prednisone a little bit. And, and, and thankfully, it, it started to, to fade away um, then. And, and it was still there a little bit today, but not as much. Uh, she had like a little bit of a, like a, a sore sort of thing on the inside of her mouth. Uh, we showed the infectious disease doctor that. He wasn't really too concerned with that. Uh, overall, she still looked a lot better than she did the previous days. It probably felt the best that she has felt in a while too. Less itchy, but still a little bit itchy from the reaction. So we spoke to the infectious disease doctor. He came in today. He's the one that's that's really kind of overseeing this all now because, you know, we're you know, it's the, her endocarditis. It's the the vegetation on her on her heart valve, which they believe a piece of that broke off, which caused the stroke to happen two weeks ago. So the antibiotics were started as therapeutics for six weeks to clear that vegetation up. Um, I wasn't sure. We weren't sure if he was going to. I thought he was going to wait. To be honest with you, I kind of wish he would uh, wait at least another day to make sure there's no more breakouts from the last set of antibiotics. But uh, this new family of antibiotics, he he wanted to get her started on it today. Uh, so they're going to monitor that then for 24 hours, make sure she doesn't have any reactions. And if all is good, they'll start a second antibiotic because they still need a, you know, a two dose regimen here to uh, go after this vegetation. So what I need from you guys, uh, your prayers need to be that she does not have any reactions uh, to these new antibiotics. They're a lot less potent than the other ones that she was on. So the infectious disease doctor is, is hoping for uh, much better results this time around. So if when you guys are praying, pray that, pray that. And this is why I give you these updates so you guys know specifically what to pray for. But pray for uh, there to be no allergic reactions to these new set of antibiotics at all. Um, and then when I come on with my next video after this, uh, the next day, then I'll, I'll be able to give you an update on the first antibiotic and believing by faith that I will have good news to, to share with you. Uh, and again, if all goes well, their their plan uh, would be to potentially, uh, we don't know for sure, but discharge her either Sunday or Monday. Uh, but as we've said, we're willing to stay as long as it's necessary to ensure that no flare-ups are going to happen because we don't want to have to go back to the hospital again for a third time because uh, you start all the way back from the beginning again. You got to go in through the emergency room. You got to wait. And their, their process is so bad. Uh, and I shared it in previous updates of what we've gone through. It is literal hell. Um, not good. You don't just get to go back to your old room and, you know, and, and, and skip all the other parts. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, I've joked at this point, it's like, you know, I, I joked about forwarding our mail over to the hospital. It's, 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 uh, it's crazy. So again, so continue to pray for her guys for that. No reactions. Pray for me as well. Pray for the strength, God, to give me strength. You know, I'm, when I'm there, you know, at, at night, I try to get, you know, two, three hours of sleep in, in this the recliner chair that I'm in, which is so uncomfortable. Uh, and then, you know, come morning, I'm on the phone, I'm calling doctors, I'm updating family members, doing text messages, all these things. I got to listen to these doctors. You know, my memory retention is a lot higher than it used to be after I lost my vision because, you know, I'm, I have to compensate for one loss of a, a loss of one sense, and then it, it picks up in other areas. So I'm able to kind of, you know, listen and, and really pack things into my brain as far as what's going on, remembering certain details about her blood thinners and everything else she's on. Uh, so again, yeah, pray for my strength, for God to sustain me through this uh, battle as we are still currently in it. So that's the update for now. There may be a few things I left out, but uh, that's, that's pretty much all of it uh, right now. So again, thank you for all your prayers and your generous donations as well. I hope you will continue to keep those coming for us. Let's talk about Cross Timbers Church because Wow. Uh, you know, just when I think that this situation is done, it's not. Uh, brief review. Josiah Anthony, former lead pastor of Cross Timbers, Argyle, Texas. They attract about 5,000 members a week on July 28th. He resigned after what elders said were inappropriate and hurtful actions. You know, real transparent, right? No, not. Extremely vague. After backlash, this forced them to come out several days later and say, in fact, what it was. 
and that was that Josiah Anthony was having inappropriate communication with women. Now, you know, originally they said that this was, you know, you know, due to his, his mental illness and things like that, but that whatever it was did not involve little ones at all, but that none of the interactions he had with the women, it was like overly familiar is what they were, they use all these weird phrases, um, but that it didn't cross any lines. Until then, we got another announcement that, in fact, the elders were made aware of text messages sent by Josiah Anthony to women in the church that did, in fact, cross the line. Now, had they had been transparent from the beginning, there wouldn't have been all the backlash and people wouldn't have been talking. But, you know, this is how these churches do. They try to protect themselves. They try to, you know, minimize as much damage as possible, prevent people from leaving, because if they leave, they're not going to be giving money anymore. They're not going to be tithing, and then the church is going to be in some major trouble. So they always care about themselves more than they do actual victims, um, and just being upfront and honest with people. Uh, I'll never understand this about these churches, but, you know, I always say mega churches equal mega problems. Look, get yourself in a home church, to be honest, because you got to go back to the book of Acts and look at how it was done then, and I, I think, to be honest with you, that's the model going forward. Um, you know, small churches are okay too, less problems, not that you can't have them, but in big mega churches like this, I mean, you're just, it, it's just going to happen. Um, and God continues to expose it. Now, let me also mention this because also in the original statement, they said that Byron Copeland, their executive pastor was going to be taking over as interim pastor for Josiah Anthony. Backlash hit after that too, because I covered this gateway church. Byron Copeland was with gateway church, good friends with Robert Morris. For more than two decades, he was with Gateway Church from 2000, from 2000 all the way to 2023. And then he comes to Cross Timbers in 2023, gets on board as an executive pastor. However, as I reported weeks ago, Byron Copeland was named in another lawsuit involving Gateway Church and a former Gateway employee by the name of Rachel Childress. Rachel Childress had sued Gateway Church and its former pastor, Aldine Pearson, for inappropriate behavior directed at her from Pearson. Now, Childress had apparently reported the behavior to Byron Copeland, who again was at Gateway at the time. At first, he seemed sympathetic to the situation, but then when she continued to bring more complaints to him, he got angry. He said that this was all her fault and that her job was even threatened because she dared to cross a pastor at Gateway. Now, once this backlash hit, Cross Timbers released another statement. All of a sudden, Byron Copeland would no longer be the interim pastor going forward. Instead, it would be Pastor Toby. Now, Pastor Toby was also one of Cross Timber's founding pastors. But Pastor Toby would take the helm instead of Byron Copeland, but there was no mention by Cross Timbers that the decision was made because of the lawsuit naming Byron Copeland. They have stayed away from that with every announcement that they have come out with. And again, it's by design because they don't want to link themselves in any way to Gateway Church because it's so toxic right now. I mean, I talked about how Ethan Fisher, Robert Morris's son, just recently renamed Gateway Houston to Newlands Church to try and, again, get the stench of Gateway out of there because, again, they think that this is going to you know, somehow stop the bleeding. Whether it does or not remains to be seen, but that's something I did call from the very beginning of the Gateway scandal was that you're going to start to see all of these different associated gateway campuses start to rebrand. Some of them may even close down. So again, uh, they never mentioned Byron Copeland's tie to the gateway lawsuit. So what happened then after that? Because again, this just keeps going, right? And I got to get you off to speed on this. Byron Copeland, just about a week ago or so, announced that he is resigning his position altogether from Cross Timbers Church. Now, was it because of the scandal again involving him and Gateway? No, of course not. It's not going to mention that. It's a new season, you see. Byron Copeland said that he felt that in this, you know, current time, the Lord was calling him to a new season of ministry, to leave Cross Timbers Church. Not that it had anything to do with him being promoted, then demoted. No, just it's a new season. Time for him to leave after being only there for a year. I'm not, but come on. You guys aren't buying this, right? Ain't no new season. He's leaving because of the backlash. And he may pop up at some church again down the road and probably in hopes that nobody will know of any of his ties, any of these things. Of course, I'll be on the case if that happens. 
So Copeland's gone. But now, the latest in this saga. More founding pastors are gone. Cross Timbers announced in a statement that founding pastors Brian and Jamie Hackney are gone, effective August 31st. Now, what were their roles? Brian Hackney and Jamie Hackney, husband and wife, they were very influential in helping get Cross Timbers started all the way back in the year 2000. Brian Hackney served as a worship pastor as well as a campus pastor before eventually heading up the church's counseling ministry called The Healing Place. Jamie Hackney, self-described marriage expert and counselor in her own right who also helped Brian out with the Healing Place Counseling Ministry. The reason for leaving? Well, they have felt now for many, many months that God was also calling them in a new direction. It's always so interesting to me that when these scandals happen, all of a sudden God's calling them all to a new direction, right? It's just always interesting to me that that's always the language that's being used. They can't just come out and say, this is a sinking ship, we're getting out. Now, I'm not saying that Brian Hackney and Jamie Hackney, uh, you know, did anything inappropriately. Uh, they may just be wanting to get the heck out of there just because, look, th th the thing is falling apart. And, and, and maybe the way that it's been led, you know, they don't want nothing to do with it anymore. You know, again, I'm not saying that they're involved in any sort of scandal themselves, but, you know, with the, the, these resignations that are continuing to just pile and stack up like day by day, I mean, look... <laughs> There's something going on here, right? But what I what I have a problem with, look, if they want to resign, let them resign. But what I have a problem with is when you're not being transparent about the real reason why you're leaving. I just don't buy this. This timing and the fact that, you know, Josiah Anthony, gone. Byron Copeland, gone. Right now, the Hackneys, gone. I, I mean, why can't anybody just come out and say it and just be honest? Byron Copeland said, you know what? I was a part of this lawsuit with Gateway. I messed up. I dropped the ball with a former employee who brought a complaint to me. I mishandled it. And I need to take responsibility and own up to it. Because of that, I don't feel that I'm currently at this time qualified for ministry. So I'm going to take a step back. See, why can't they do that? Why can't they do that? You know, the, the, the pride, the arrogance of these pastors is, is just unreal to me. It's more about protecting their image and they give you the, the whole, the new season speech that God is calling me into a new season or for the hackneys. You know, we felt for many months now that God was calling us into a new direction, new direction. Yeah. The direction that points you as far away from the stench of the, the, the cross timber scandal as possible, right? I guess that's the new direction. And look, I, there's a lot of people that worship these churches. I see them in the comments section. Oh, they, they say, they call me names. They don't like that. I talk about this stuff. They want to bury their head in the sand and pretend none of it happens, right? But you're ignoring God's own words about the judgment starting in his house. He's cleaning it up. I mean, why can't that be a good thing? That he's removing people that shouldn't be there. And hopefully, hopefully putting people in their place that will do the right things. That will be transparent. That won't be caught up in scandals. They actually have a desire to really teach the word of God and not, you know, worry about celebrity status, fame, all that stuff. So I talk about the home church model so much because that's not what it's about. And I think as we continue to progress in these last days that you're going to see even more of these mega churches coming down because uh, God's done. Uh, he's fed up with it. Whether they're getting arrested or whether they're resigning, whatever the case, uh, things are being shaken, let's just say. But that's the update. If you guys want to read up more on this, you can go check out the article. It's available over at Church Leaders. You can go to their website and read some more about it. I want to get your thoughts. You can leave them down below in the comments section. What do you think about the latest set of resignations from Cross Timbers, that being pastors Brian and Jamie Hackney? You know how we say everyone calls himself a pastor these days, right? The, the, the creative worship pastor, the imaging pastor, the... Uh, facilities maintenance pastor. Everybody has, has a title of pastor. And as I always say, to remind you guys with this before I wrap up, the Bible clearly says that you will know people by their fruits, not by their titles. You know, people look at a title and they think they can automatically believe it because, oh, it's a pastor, so I can trust them. No, you can't. No, you can't. 
Bob would have, Bob will say nothing, nothing. I'm saying, can I say nothing? So I'm sleep deprived. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, just going off here, but I still got it. It doesn't say you'll know people by their title. You'll know them by their fruits. And you have to be able to ask the Holy Spirit for discernment in these days because there's a lot of deception, a lot of deception going on right now. So just something to remember. But again, your comments are welcome down below. Um, also, again, your donations, guys, if you were able to help out, if, if you're blessed by this ministry in general that I do, um, and that's enough for you guys to want to leave a donation, whether it's to our GoFundMe, again, the link is in the description, or you can do it through the Patreon, through the Super Thanks on YT. It's all appreciated. However, you can help us out in this time. Again, your generosity has just been uh, overwhelming to us. We cannot thank you all enough for what you have already done and will continue to do for us going forward. But what I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. It's an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news, God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do, repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ, and I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you, and I'll talk with you soon.